Welcome to the first ever installment of Ricky's Pictures. Today we're going to a temple called Chandi Prambanan here near Yogyakarta, Indonesia, and we're going to photograph it. So in this series, I'm going to take you along with me, teaching you how I set up my shots, and then how I go back to the studio and edit those shots to be able to upload them and sell them to publishers and social media and everything else. So without further ado, I've already called a Grab, which is like the Uber of Southeast Asia. So here we go. I just got here to the pa, pa, whatever I'm gonna put it right here because I don't remember the name of it but um yeah so the guy who drove me here he wanted to take a picture with me because it was the first time probably that he drove a white guy so that was pretty funny and now I'm just gonna go pay the entrance fee and go in here and explore for a little bit before I set up my tripod Alright, so I was just looking over in this direction and I thought I found the composition over there that I really liked and then I just came and started kept walking around and now I'm really loving this. So I think this is what I'm going to shoot tonight at sunset. I'm just going to stand around and wait around and look at this temple a little bit more and then at sunset I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shoot this, uh, shoot this photo right here with all these big blocks in the way and everything. So uh, let's just wait a couple hours for the sun to go down and we'll get that. Alright, so I did another lap around this place just to kill some time and see if I could find another composition. I did not. This is my favorite composition of them all. And I'll show you that through the camera now. And so the things I like about this composition is just that it's got an awesome foreground element. All these big blocks here in foreground. And then you can see the entirety of the temple. Uh, and a lot of the other compositions I could only see one, two, or maybe three of the buildings. So this is really good and I also get a lot of the sky from this angle. So I really like this composition, so I'm gonna set my timer. I'm gonna set one and a half minutes, it's gonna take a picture, and I'm gonna just keep doing that for about two hours. It was starting to rain earlier, so I put this uh, raincoat on my camera, just to keep it dry, because I don't have a weather sealed camera, but uh, so far it hasn't been a problem. There hasn't been any more rain, but I don't want to disturb the camera, so I'll just leave it on there. Well, it seems like the sky here isn't going to do much of anything, so I'm going to wait another 30 minutes about, and then I'm going to pack it up and call it a night. And hopefully I can find some Wi-Fi around here so that I can find a ride home. Otherwise, I'm going to be work walking maybe two hours tonight. All right, the light never really did anything, and it's getting pretty late. Um, it's getting pretty dark, and the lights aren't coming on, so I'm going to go ahead and pack this up. And I'm going to head back to the studio, and we're going to see what we can get out of what I got today. Alright guys, so I'm back in the studio now. And as you can tell, I sprung for quite the nice studio. No, I did not have to spend millions of dollars on this. It is actually just my hotel room. So I'm working right from my bed, as I do a lot when there's no desk or anything in my hotel room. And uh, luckily I have air conditioning up here, so I'm not too hot. I can keep my shirt on for now. But let's go ahead and jump in the Lightroom and I'll show you what I got. So here in Lightroom, I already selected, as you can see with the green highlights here, exactly which skies I want. So I really like these two skies, um, but I think I chose, I settled on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that one to blue. So that's going to be my main sky. So I really like just the way that the clouds are in here and in here. and little bit of this color down here at the bottom. I liked in the other one these little streaks right here but I didn't feel like it had as much detail on the sides here and I thought maybe these streaks actually took away from the uh, the users uh, I thought maybe they took away something from the from the temple here so I'm gonna go ahead and settle on this one uh, it's not the type of sky that I wanted when I set out here. I wanted a nice sunset with a lot of color and vibrance behind the temples, but 
we didn't get that. So sometimes you just have to settle for what you got. And what we did get is a pretty dramatic sky. So it's not too bad. It's got a lot of clouds and some nice light. Um, the lighting wasn't too harsh because of all the clouds. So this is really good. Now, if you'll notice, I could get the shadows out here, but there's a lot of people in the scene and it's really dark. So I actually really like the neutral exposures more. So I'm gonna use the neutral exposure for the foreground here. But the problem with the neutral exposure is that you lose a lot of this detail here where these, these people are going up and down the stairs, there's a lot of tourists in the shot. So I don't want to paint them out because then I'm not going to lose some of the detail of the steps and things like that. I won't be able to get it exact. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select a lot of the different exposures here and I'm just going to go through all the neutral exposures and try to get a shot where everything is free of people. So I'm not gonna get one where everything is free of people, but what I want is to put them all together and just color out some of the people from some of them. So if you'll notice here, like a lot of these people have left from the sides. If I go back to the original, now I don't have all of them in the other one, and I also got rid of some of these people up by the trees and things. So, if I zoom in here, just making sure this is in focus, and once it loads here, yep, you can see that everything is in focus, so I'm just going to want to knock out some of these people. So if I go over to an image here, like I'll get some of this back, and if I go to another one, see here, now I've gotten rid of all those people, so I'm going to go ahead and five star that and I'll five star this one. So wherever I have people in this, I'm going to look for an exposure where I don't have people. So if I zoom back into these people, now let's go to this other one. Oh, now you can see all of those people where they were, they're gone. So I can just go ahead and paint them out using this exposure. And you want to use as, as few exposures as possible, it's just less work. So let's go back to the original and see where there's some more people. You can see over here by this tree, so let's see what this one gives us. We still got a lot of people, so I knock out a few of those people, but I still got all these people sitting here. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and find another exposure yet, where I can get rid of those people. So they've been sitting there this whole time, not moving. Let's see if I can find a better one. Still all there, actually we're adding more people. Still there, these pesky little people, these four people, they're not moving. There we go. All right, so we still got their little bags, but that'll be easy to color out. So I can go ahead and use this exposure. I'll give that a five stars too. So now let's see what we're left with. So we go back to the original exposure. Now, I've got rid of most people. We've got some people over here too. So let's see if one of the ones we've already chosen gets them out. Not that one. Not that one either. So is there any of these exposures within those? You want to get as close to the exposure as possible because that's where the light's going to be the most similar. So this one is almost good. I could paint this guy out. Okay, there we go. So I'll go ahead and unfive star this, just give that a zero, because now this one is completely free of people over here. So we'll use that one for that section. And go back to our original. Now, this is gonna be the hardest part. This is where all the tourists like to hang out, it seems. So, in that one, we've got a bunch of people. In this one, we've got a bunch of people. In this one, we've still got a bunch of people. So I think I'm going to have to go pretty far out to start cutting that down. So you can see more people are coming. All right, so this one on this ledge, I got rid of a lot of people. So I can go ahead and use this one for the ledge. Alright, 
and this one doesn't have many people and I could cut them out I could paint them out if I need to so I'll go ahead and use this exposure to get rid of the last of the people and that should be it for all of the tourists if we've got some left over we can go ahead and just paint them out using the clone stamp tool in Photoshop all right so now I'm just going to take all these five star photos that we just got the exposures that we like and I'm going to go ahead and edit them and make them all the same so if I go ahead and just select all of these neutral exposures that we five starred alright so I like the first one that we got next to the sky the best so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna edit this a little bit I'm gonna apply this uh, basic preset that I already have and basically what this does let's make sure it applied nope. alright so what this does is just removes chromatic aberration and then it enables the profile correction for my lens so I have a wide angle on here and I was shooting at just over 18 mil uh, let's see I was shooting at 24 mil and so I'm going to get some vignetting and some distortion on the edges there so this is going to go ahead and get rid of that and then also here on the sharpening Adobe does this 25 automatic sharpening every time you do something in Lightroom and I like to offset that a little bit I got this from Eli Licardi he does this and so he just offsets the noise that that adds by doing a little bit of noise reduction I like to do about 15 or so it seems seems like it keeps to the, to the the photo's original settings you don't get any extra grain in there and I like to keep it on Adobe Standard because it just gives you a very light color format you don't get any extra uh, saturation or anything like that alright so now I'm just going to play with the highlights a little bit let's see what looks good remember I don't care if the sky gets blown out I only care what happens in the foreground for this photo because I have this one already for the sky so for the foreground I only care about what's going on down here so let's see I think I like it a little bit less in the highlights but not too much maybe a little negative 19 or so is good uh, let's see shadows I don't really think I have to do anything with the shadows because I caught it at a good pretty good time of day Alright, I'm just going to bring down the blacks just for a little bit of contrast, just down to a negative 5, let's say. And I'm just going to, for easiness, I'll just make this highlights negative 20. And let's see if I want to play with the temperature at all. So I think I want to bring this up just a hair, not to this. I want to bring this up. It was at 50-50 to start, so let's see. I might want to bring it down to, let's say, 5200. Alright, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. It just adds a little bit of warmth to the rocks here. Uh, I think I might have even gone a little bit too far. I think I'm going to stay about 51. And then if I want to change it in Photoshop later, I can always change it in Photoshop. That's the great thing about shooting in RAW. Alright, and I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance here. Not too much. You, when you go too much, you can see what happens. I just want to add a tiny little bit, maybe 7. Let's see. Let's put it down to 7. And let's see if we want to add some dehaze. I think I'll just add a little bit of dehaze here, maybe give it a 14. So I'll just add a 14, and now we're going to go down here and we're going to select the image and say develop settings, copy settings. And we're going to want to do everything that I already did. So white balance, basic tones, uh, I didn't give any of that. We gave a little bit of vibrance, the noise reduction lens corrections 
and we did do some dehaze. So just copy those settings. And now you're going to want to select every five star photo that we made. Just go through here and select them all. Now right click on any one of them and say develop settings, paste settings. So that's going to give all of these the same edits that we just did on that one so that they all look very similar and we can smoothly edit them together. All right, and now for the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and take the sky and I'm going to bring, I'm going to first do the basic correction and that just gives my lens corrections and sets the, let's go ahead and do the change to noise reduction to 15 just like the other one. All right, so now the sky looks pretty good here. I just want to pull down the highlights a little bit so we get a little bit more detail. That's a little bit too much. Maybe go to a 38. That looks about good. And I want to pull the shadows up just a little bit. Remember, we don't care about anything that's happening in the foreground. We're only looking at the sky for this one. So I just want to pull up the shadows a little bit. And let's see. And bring the vibrance up just a hair. Let's say to 17. Now that's a little bit too much, I think. Let's do about a 12. And now in the whites, let's see if I want to do anything with the whites. I think I like the whites just where they were. And let's bring the color up to match the other one. We'll just add a 5100 for the temperature. So we'll just change the temperature to 5100 and now we are good to go. So now we can take all of our exposures, anything with five stars, I'm just going to select them, select them all, make sure I'm not missing any. Alright, and so now you're going to right click again on any one of them, say export, export. All right, now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So you're going to want to export to whatever photo, whatever uh, folder you'd like to put them in. I always sort by the date, the place, and then what type of file it is. So for these, these are going to be PSDs. So I'm going to select this folder. I'm not going to change anything else. I'm going to go down here to Image Format, PSD. And I already have a preset for these settings, so you can make a preset after you do this one time, so you don't have to do it again. Um, color space is Pro Photo RGB. Now that's going to give you the widest color space of any of these. So once you put it on Instagram or something, it's going to automatically convert it down to sRGB. You're going to lose some of that color space, but for professional photography, you're going to want to work in the largest color space possible, and that's going to be Pro Photo RGB. And then you're going to want 16 bits for the highest quality images. Now that's going to make it run a little bit slower, but it's worth it. Uh, same down here, the resolution should always be 300 or greater. You don't want to do anything less than 300 if you're planning on going to print with an image. If you're ever going to print your image, you want it to be at least 300 dpi. Otherwise it's going to look a bit grainy and things like that. And then down here, just go to open in Adobe Photoshop. CC, you might not have CC 2018, whatever version you have here. I'm going to say export. So now we're just going to wait while all of these files export here, and once we get them to Photoshop, we'll pull them up. All right, so I've got everything in Photoshop now. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven images here to work with. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take all of these images and bring them down to one file. So I just want to take all these, and I'm going to Control A for all. Control C for copy, Control W for close, and Control V for paste. So I'm going to do that for each one of these here, and I'll skip this for you so you're not bored. All right, so now I've got all of the images into one layer here, or one uh, Photoshop file here, sorry. So I've got all of these layers, seven layers. And as you can see, I can just go up one by one. So this is my first layer, second layer. Third layer, fourth layer, fifth layer, sixth layer, seventh layer. All right, 
So this one here, layer one, is the sky. I know that if I push, hold Alt and click on the little eyeball here, that'll just show me that one image so I know that that's my sky. So I'm going to name that sky. And now I've got to find which one is my main image. So it was one with all these little girls here at the front of the temple. So that's going to be the first image here. So this is my main layer. And I wanted this layer just because it's the closest to the sky. All right. So now I'm going to take that and keep the sky off for now. And all of these other layers above it, I'm just going to one at a time make one visible and then black it out with a mask. To black it out with a mask, I'm going to hold the Alt key while I click the mask. So that's going to black it out. So now it's not visible at all. It doesn't matter if I turn it on or off. And what I'm going to want to do is just see which parts I can paint out. So actually, if I go ahead and delete that mask right now, I can see that all of these girls here, I can paint out with this and maybe some right in here. So let's go ahead and black that out again real quick. And so we're going to go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to take the brush tool and make sure this is switched to white. You can switch this with the X key. And so just set your brush to, let's see, maybe 72 size or a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to set my flow to a low flow of maybe 50%. Okay. So now I can just go ahead and start painting these people out. Now I'm working with the mouse here. I highly recommend using a Wacom tablet or something like that. I'm going to be getting one soon. It's not easy to buy them overseas. So I'm going to have to wait until somebody comes and visits me so they can bring it to me. But right now I'm just working with my little touchpad and it's a pain. So just bear with me. So I'll just go ahead and keep painting these people out. See how many of these people I can paint out. I don't know what this is here. But I won't do that. Now you're going to be wanting to look for changes in the backdrop when you're doing this, so make sure nothing too much changes. But so far we're looking pretty good. I'll just paint out some of this little stuff, see if I can get rid of these people. And let's see about these. So right now we're looking pretty good. Let's see about these people here. Yep. Get them right out of the picture. Let's see here. See here, I'm running into a problem. If I try to paint them out, then more people are coming in. So I'll leave them for now. I'll paint out this one because she goes away a little bit. All right. Now let's see how we can get rid of these people. Alright, so this one changes quite a bit, but you can see that the color is also changing quite a bit. So I'm going to lose some of that, that color, and I'm not really liking the way this one's looking, but you might have to deal with that. So I'll add a mask and just paint these guys out. Let's see how much I can do without getting those backpacks. So I really only got this one black pack here, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this clone stamp tool right now. And I will move that. And just clone that out. So it's pretty hard to tell that anything's changed, especially when you go ahead and zoom back out. Alright, so we just got these people here. Let's see if I can paint them out as well. I'm going to select this layer first. Just go ahead and paint them out. 
that water bottle. All right. Who else do we have here? We've got a cat, it looks like. Go ahead and remove the cat. And we still have these people over here. Let's see if this one will get them out. So I'm still not taking them out. Uh, let's see. What can we do to get rid of them? So I might have to move this layer down lower. So they've got so this one girl is still going to be in that one. See what the sky one gives us. No, nope, too many people. All right, this is going to be the best one. So let's put a layer here. And try to paint that out. So now I'm going to get this girl's hand with the selfie stick, and I'll just clone stamp her out. Brush, get that down just like that. Maybe I'll paint some of this rock in. All right, let's see. How's that look zoomed out? Can't tell at all. So the thing is, so much of this stuff is so small that once you zoom all the way out and you're looking at it on the screen, you can't tell at all. So you don't have to be exactly perfect unless you want to blow this up for a billboard or something like that. And we just have these people over here to get out. So let's see if we can get them with this layer. Set this back to white. And paint them right out. Alright. I'm going to zoom back out and just kind of scroll around and make sure we got everything. See what this is over here. That's just part of the temple. Oh, you can see right here. We got a little something there. So I could do this two ways. I could use the clone stamp or I could try to get them out. I think I'm going to try to get them out the way we've been doing it. Let me just see what I can do with some of these layers. And this first layer, just paint them right out for me. All right. Let's keep going, make sure there's nothing else. And I think we're ready to edit our image. So there's one layer here that we actually never use, so I'm just going to go ahead and trash that. We don't need it. And I'm going to take the sky and I'm going to put it at the top. So when I do that, 
you can see what happens when I bring the sky in. And I'm actually going to put this in a folder. And then I'm going to go to Channels. And I'm going to select the art. Let's see. It gives us the best sky. So here, if you go to the blue, that's the most white in the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And I'm going to make a copy. And I'm going to push Control M to get my uh, curves up here. And I want to just blow out that sky a little bit. Because anything that's white, it's going to be replaced when I make this a mask. I just want to make this dark. So if I do it too much, I'm going to get some lines. But if I just make it dark like this, see what that does for us. So now I've got this mask so I can select it by control clicking it and I can bring it over here to this folder and I'll apply it as a mask. Alright, so now this is what it's done. So see those lines I was talking about? We got some of that around here. So I want to do throw this away. And I'm going to Go back to the channel and I'm going to take this and I'm going to throw this away and make a new copy. So this is just trial and error here. I'm going to do the curves again. I'm going to find a good spot. Let's try that. So control click that again, go to layers, I'm going to go zoom out. this as a mask to the folder. Alright, so now I'm not getting those lines, so that's good. So we can go ahead and zoom out. Now you're going to see that I'm going to start getting some pictures, some people in here because it's not completely blacked out. We're going to have to do that manually. But I've got most of the sky here, so without this layer, look at the sky. Now look at it again. It's much better. So that's without and that's with. Much, much better. Alright. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to black out everything that's in the temples. So if I push this, I can go ahead and take a brush and make it pretty big. Much bigger. Not that big. Let's go with 500. And a flow of 100 for this. And I'm just going to paint black all over here. Went a little too far, that's the problem with using the touchpad. And make this brush a little bit bigger. Let's make it a thousand. And I'll just paint this out. One thing I can do is I can alt click on the mask here and I can just make sure I have black and then I can see exactly what I'm doing. So I just want all of this down here to be black. I don't want that sky layer affecting anything from the foreground. So now I'll go ahead and make this smaller. in some of these temples. Now the edges don't have to be black because you want it to kind of run into the sky, but I just don't want to get too much of that dark color in the temples here. Alright, and I'm going to do the exact opposite on the sky here. So I'm going to take white, and I'm just going to paint white. Let me get another big brush. And I'm just not that big. This is why I need a Wacom tablet. 
I'm just going to paint white because I don't want this to be anything from the foreground. I just want only the sky in this layer. So as much of this as I can paint white without going over the temples like that, I'm going to do Some of this grayness kind of helps it blend to the foreground, so you don't want to get the white all the way to the edges, or you'll get those white edges of the temples that I showed you before that we didn't want. So now we've got before here and after. So we're not getting any of those negative effects down here. We're not getting any of the people in here. We're not getting any different coloring. We're just getting the sky up above. And that's exactly what we want. So now we've got our image. So we want to take all of these what we want to do is, I don't like to get rid of anything. I just like to put it in folders, even though it makes the file size bigger. Because this is already almost a one gigabyte file, but I hate getting rid of things in case I need to go back and change something later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these and merge it down into one image just on top. So to do that, I do Control shift alt e and so that's just going to make a one layer out of all of this. So if I turn off the folder, now you can see there's just this one layer. All right. Now that we've got our layer, we can go ahead and start our editing. So I typically use Google Knit Collections, and you can Google, download Google Knit Collection from online, and it's free download. And all you have to do is install it, put it in your Adobe folder, and you're good to go. I'm going to be doing a video on that soon, so stay tuned for that if you are curious and you're confused by it. But most of what I'm going to be doing is with Google Knit Collection. I just think that the contrast it adds is far superior to even just Adobe Camera Raw. Now you can do some great things in Adobe Camera Raw, and if it's all I had, I wouldn't be mad. But since Google Knit Collections is free and it's easy to use, I use that almost every single picture that I do. So let's go ahead, I'm just going to let this save, and I will fast forward to when it's saved because it takes forever. Alright, it's finished saving here, so I'm going to go up and I'm going to get, select it on my layer, I'm going to go to Google Knit Collection. So it's under Filter, Knit Collection, and I'm going to go to Color Effects Pro. You have to give this some time to load. Now when you start here, you'll probably be in all. I've already selected all of my favorites, so you can just pause the video here if you want and add your own favorites based on mine. But I'm going to go ahead and start off with this Pro Contrast. This is my favorite of all the Knit Collection filters. And it just adds this dynamic contrast that's really nice. So as I'm scrolling this over here, I'm really liking what that's doing. It's just brightening up the foreground and bringing out the background. So I think somewhere, if you go too far, you can tell it looks ridiculous. But somewhere around 40% is looking good here. Let's see what this correct does. So that's going to add a little bit of blacks. Bring out the blacks a little bit. I'm going to want some of that, but not too much. Just a tad, maybe 9% looks good. Let's see what the correct color cast does. So that's trying to add just a little bit of magenta into the picture. And I kind of like what it's doing here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that. And then I'm going to say OK. Now you have to wait a while for this Google Knit Collection to do its thing, especially if you've got a little bit slower computer. I'm working on a pretty good laptop, but it's a laptop nonetheless. It's not a professional desktop computer, so it takes me a little bit longer. All right, and so now it's loaded, and I really like what that's done. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really liking that here. So let's see what we can do with a few more of the collection things. So let's go up to Color Effects Pro again. And let's, I think I want to add some warmth to this picture. I think it's a little bit too blue. 
I'm not liking all the blue. So I just want to add, you know what, I'm going to do that later. Well, no, here, I'll show you how to do it here. So I add some warmth there. I don't like what it's doing to the sky at all, but I do like what it's doing to the foreground. If I just add a little bit like that, let's see what that looks like. Toggle it on and off. I don't want it to affect the sky, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take it out of the sky. I can do that just like this. I'll click to move some more of these. I can just move it out of the sky with that. So if I look at my control points, yeah, I like that. All right, now I'm going to add another filter here. I'm going to go to polarization. So with the polarization, it's really going to be good for the sky. But as you can see, it's also adding some color contrast down below that I like. So I'm just going to bring that up to around 95%. I'm going to hit OK. Now my computer's working really hard here, it's getting very hot, so after this I'm going to want to save because as we all know Photoshop does often crash and you don't want it to crash and have to redo a lot of your work, so make sure you're saving consistently just like you should be when you're in Word or any other program. Alright, I'm just going to do two more Nick Collection filters here I think and then I'm going to sharpen this and I think I will have a product that I like, so let's go ahead and go back to Color Effects Pro. Wait for this to load. Now I'm going to add some contrast color range. So if you look at this when it first starts, you can tell that it's ridiculous. You would never want to keep it like that. So what you're going to do is go ahead and just slide these all down to zero. Sometimes you just have to wiggle this brightness just to get it to reset. And so now we're back at zero. So we can slowly add a little bit of this color contrast. And you can just see it's really bringing out those colors. I'm just going to add a little bit of that and some contrast here just a tad. I think I'm going to bring the brightness down a tad. I think it was a little bit too bright, especially in the foreground. Didn't like it so much, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to maybe a 3%. Maybe even a minus 4. Let's see what that looks like. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another filter and do tonal contrast. And this is the same thing. You have to bring all these things down to zero before you begin. I don't know why they start with them up so high. It looks insane. All right, so now I've got these highlights. So let's say if I bring them all the way up, you can see the sky gets really crazy. So I want a little bit of that, but nothing that much. So I'm going to say maybe 8%. Let's see the difference there. It just adds a little bit of definition to the sky, and that's all I'm trying to get out of this filter, is just a little bit of definition. All right, the mid-tones is where you're going to play it the most. It's going to affect the most things. So if I bring this all the way up again, insane. Pretty cool, though. Um, so I'm going to bring it down to maybe, let's see, maybe 10%. I think 10% looks pretty good. Let's see if we want some of the shadows. Again, you bring this up all the way, it's ridiculous. Just bring maybe, I think just uh, 2%, 2% that's enough. All right, so if I turn this on and off, you can just see the difference, especially in the sky. It brings out this dramatic sky, I really like that. Let's go ahead and hit okay on that. I realize this is a little bit more intense than I want it to be, so I'm going to go ahead and just turn down the opacity of it a little bit. If I go all the way down, you can see that's the original. 
lines. I just don't like all the shadow in the foreground. So I'm just going to bring it down to about 80%. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I still like it a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and double this one under it. Just create a copy of this layer that's right here under it. And then I'm going to merge this top one that I just made and turn to 80%. Just merge that down by pressing Control E. So that'll just make one 100% opacity layer on top. And you can see the improvement. All right. So what we're going to do now is some sharpening. So we're going to go ahead and double this layer. Then I'm going to go to Filter, Other, High Pass. And here I'm going to make this a 3.0. And what this is going to do, it's going to look really weird at first, but if you go ahead and change the blending mode to overlay, now if you zoom in here, let me, uh, grab the zoom tool, zoom in on some rocks here, you're going to see if I toggle it on and off, see that difference? It just really adds some sharpness. So if I zoom back out, I really only want the sharpness in the foreground and I want the fade as it goes to the background because that's kind of what the eye does. So I'm going to add a black mask to this. Just get rid of it everywhere. And I'm going to take the brush and I'm just going to paint it in. And I'm going to use a flow of only, let's say, uh, let's say 100. And wherever I Wherever you see the red here, that's where there's no sharpening. So I'm just going to add it in. And I don't really want it to be on the grass. I just want it to be on these rocks a little bit. So I'll just paint that in. And the red makes it easy to see exactly what you're doing, exactly where you're going. Just add a little bit of black back in there. And I basically just want this sharpening to lead the eye to the main focus, which is these big temples. Just add a little bit in here. Let me turn my flow down to maybe 50%, and I'm going to paint some of this back to black. But I just want a little bit. this down even further, 20%, and I'll just paint some of this just there. Give these temples a little bit, not too much. Let's see how that looks. Let's go ahead and turn that mask off. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see we're just getting a little bit of sharpening in those temples and a lot in the foreground. And I really like that. All right. I think that's about it for this image. We could go in here and toggle some more things if we wanted to. I could add some greens and change up, maybe add a little bit of reds. But for now, uh, I just want to start this channel off with some easier tasks, and so I think we've got a great image here. You could go ahead and post this up on Facebook, on Instagram, or wherever you post your images, 500px, and you'd have a phenomenal image to share with everybody. So I hope you like this video. If you want to see more videos like that, I'm making a lot more, so just go ahead and hit that subscribe button below, hit the thumbs up so more people can see this video. It'll spread like wildfire throughout the YouTube community, hopefully, and a lot more people who want to see videos like this will see this. 
The reason I'm making these is because I wanted more videos like this and I didn't really see too many out there that weren't in high price tutorial packs. So I just want to put these out there for free on YouTube and share them with the world. So thank you very much for watching. I know it's been a long video. Appreciate you sticking with me and I'll see you in a few days for the next one.